Hi, good evening. Today we will cover the part 6 of uh, the total of 8 sets on the introduction to Lean Six Sigma. This uh, presentation is going to be focused on the analyze phase of Lean Six Sigma. If you have not seen the earlier presentations uh, that we have done on Lean Six Sigma, we have covered an overview of Lean Six Sigma, we have covered the perspectives of Lean Six Sigma, we have also covered the define and measure phase and uh, today we are going to cover the analyze phase of uh, Lean Six Sigma. Um, as uh, we have discussed in the previous presentations, all these uh, videos uh, and presentations are available for free download at uh, network.kinders.com. This is the Kinders Consulting Network. Uh, we have roughly around 1300 uh, experts from all over the world. We also have a lot of uh, uh, videos and blogging from experts uh, you also have the option of posting questions and getting answers from experts from all over the world from roughly about 92 countries um, so feel free go ahead make sure you make good use of it and uh, make sure you do give us your feedback so that we can continuously improve so uh, the analyze phase of uh, lean six sigma what we have done in the defined phase is identified the problem statement uh, that could have the most business impact and what we then do in the measure phase is measure the amount of problem and uh, also define the exact amount of uh, improvement that you want to achieve uh, and set those targets uh, in a very smart way you obviously also uh, evaluate the measurement system and if the entire measurement system is good or not you analyze what's the current capability level and uh, you identify your data collection formats and points once you have done all that you move into the analyze phase where you analyze what's stopping you from achieving the full potential of a particular business process uh, which is where you know you uh, identify potential root causes you apply tools like uh, failure mode effect analysis you implement a lot of comparative methods uh, you understand what is the source of the variation uh, there are a lot of statistical tools uh, which are used in the analyze phase to uh, make sure we, we understand what are the sources of variation like the hypothesis test uh, out there you also do co correlation regression and basically identify uh, the key reasons why you are unable to achieve the full potential of a particular process so what are the key deliverables that you get out of the analyzed phase you uh, validate some of your root causes you redefine your problem statement in a much more specific way uh, as the need might arise uh, you understand the sources of variations and also look at what are the potential solutions that we can put in place uh, for a business process to achieve its full potential or the target potential. Uh, there are a lot of tools uh, that are used in the analyze phase. Some of them are lean tools, uh, very philosophical, conceptual. Uh, there are statistical tools which are more Six Sigma tools. Uh, what we uh, are going to do in this presentation is look at a couple of very simple tools. Uh, the first lean tool that is widely used in the industry and is very very effective is the value stream mapping tool. Uh, this is a tool, uh, all it basically says is that there are two kinds of activities in every business process. The first one is understanding what are the value adding activities and the second one is understanding what are the non value adding activities in uh, every business process so let's take an example of uh, a gas station or a petrol station uh, as you know people call it differently in different parts of the world so what do you do i mean you know let's say i have a car or you have a car uh, and you want to go to a petrol station or a gas station and get your tank filled uh, uh, 
the steps that you would primarily follow are, you know, you would enter the petrol station. Uh, there would be a lot of petrol pumps or gas pumps, so you would find the gas pump with the smallest queue. Uh, you would wait in the queue and uh, you would make an upfront payment as it happens in the US. Uh, if you are in India, the payment happens later on. Uh, you stop the vehicle because uh, in a lot of petrol pumps it's recommended that you stop the vehicle uh, to prevent any static igniting any gas or petrol. Uh, in, in India there are helpers who help you fill the tank. In the US you probably have to do it on your own. Uh, once that's done you close the lid and you start the vehicle and you obviously carefully exit the petrol station or gas station uh, and avoid any standing traffic. And finally, you exit the petrol station. Now, if you are a customer, uh, let's look at what are the value adding activities to you. Uh, you would want to enter the petrol station, fill the tank, and get out. That's about it. Uh, you know, even making a payment probably is not value adding to you. You know, if you could have avoided that, you probably would avoid that. Uh, some things like st stopping the vehicle, starting the vehicle, finding this, uh, the the uh, the pump with the smallest queue, waiting in a queue. You know these are all non-value adding non-value adding activities for a customer. Uh, so this uh, the value stream mapping concept looks at every business process from a customer's uh, viewpoint. And all it says is that, you know, your goal should be to either eliminate non-value adding activities or make them more efficient. Uh, and that's basically the goal of uh, value stream mapping. And what it also says is that if you cannot make it, if you cannot eliminate it, or if you cannot make it more efficient, uh, make that particular step a bit more emotionally satisfying for the customer. So let's take this example, right? I mean, you know, uh, let's take the second step where the customer finds a pump with the smallest queue. How could you make it more efficient? You could probably put up some display boards that clearly state that pump number one is free, pump number two is free. Uh, in a lot of places in India, you will find uh, there's, there's a person who's directing each car uh, or a two-wheeler towards uh, the queue with the smallest the pump with the smallest queue um, and obviously let's look at the second step I mean the customer waits in a queue uh, a lot of petrol pumps in India where you know uh, they, they come and wash your uh, windows uh, the glass windows uh, they probably check your tire pressures uh, while you're waiting in the queue um, so it makes you more emotionally satisfying that okay you know, somebody taking care of cleaning my uh, glasses, uh, glass windows, probably cleaning the car or something like that. And customer makes payment. Now this is a pain area, so probably you could introduce a, a payment method by which you know you could somebody you could look into the retina and figure out some particular uh, trends or some logical algorithms for a particular eye and make payment automatically or using a thumb impression so it becomes a lot more easier uh, for you to make the payment or maybe the there's a, a credit card that's tied up to the uh, car number uh, and it is automatically deducted uh, so there are ways you know you could innovate uh, and how you how could you avoid customers stopping the vehicle and starting the vehicle maybe you could come up with some technology where the customer doesn't need to do those things. So, you know, uh, at a high level, uh, value stream mapping can force you to come out with a lot of very good ideas and make you and, and help you bring in a lot of business improvements uh, within any business process. Uh, it's very simple, um, uh, but very rarely used and it's very effective. Uh, in fact, I was reading an article where they were saying it's roughly about 80 to 90 percent of all steps in any business process are non-value adding for a customer. Now that's a huge amount of non-value adding steps. 
uh, and these are actually a lot of low hanging fruits for you to bring in improvements uh, so if based on my experience i would recommend that you first implement uh, uh, tools like value stream mapping or other lean tools so that you catch hold of the low hanging fruits and then get into more statistical tools like six sigma or you know hypothesis testing f test t test you know others like that okay the second simple tool uh, that is again very very effective is uh, what you call as a fishbone analysis or you sometimes I mean, it's they're also known as cause effect diagrams now uh, in this example uh, uh, you know th this is concept of process improvement proposals within a particular organization uh, where associates from the entire organization send send in their proposals to improve various business processes and there's a team that's focused on reviewing these uh, improve uh, process improvement proposals or pips and uh, based on the feedback the uh, and the discussions with the senior management they take a decision on how to go about improving them now in this case what happened was there was a high variation in the review age uh, the possibly they were supposed to take a couple of days to review each process improvement proposal but they were taking maybe 60 days or 90 days or whatever now when this happens you know what you can do is you know get a team together uh, and have them sit in a room and start to brainstorm on why something is happening why why there's so much of variation uh, and you know in this case what what has been uh, recognized by the team is that one there are no detailed formal processes that have been laid out with formal service level agreements so there's no goal that has been set for the team that you have to complete it in two days or one day or four days uh, it's completely open uh, because of which there's, there's, there's a lot of slackness in the system uh, what they also realized was that there are very few controls in place uh, which means that there are no periodic reviews happening on how things are progressing and uh, formal controls are not defined and documented um, the other important aspect that came out of this analysis is that uh, this very less time assigned to this team uh, to review PIPs probably because they're being pulled into other business critical activities on a day-to-day -day basis so because of which you know they have never been able to uh, focus on reviewing the proposals that are coming in uh, and possibly, you know, it's also a very boring activity. It's a mundane activity. Uh, there's probably too much of manual effort. Uh, maybe all the data is being maintained in Excel. So a lot of effort goes into picking up stuff from emails that come into putting them into Excel sheets. So, you know, it's a simple analysis that you can sit and do and then identify uh, areas of focus. In this, you know, in this case, there are two areas of focus out here, um, and um, you can go ahead and, and you know figure out ways to sort out these issues out there. Uh, the reason it is called a fishbone diagram is because you know if you look at this diagram, uh, it possibly looks like a fish, is because you know if this is the head, and this is the entire skeleton of the fish. So that's why it's called the fishbone analysis. So what is fishbone analysis? It's a thinking tool that helps to organize ideas uh, about potential causes of a problem. Uh, it is a graphical display to probe for and show relationships between a problem and its possible causes. Uh, while building a fishbone, it is good to have people with knowledge of different parts of the process to participate. The other tool that you could also use to uh, analyze you know if uh, analyze you know why your business process is unable to achieve its full potential is what you call as scatter plots now let's say there's an analysis you're doing to check whether there's any correlation between this, the max score in theory to max score in practicals all you can do is you know create a small graph with the with both of these plotted on the x-axis and y-axis and this is what you get now in this case uh, it is showing that yeah there is a correlation between 
the marks you score between in, in theory and marks you score in practical. So it's a very simple tool that helps determine if a relationship exists between two measures or indicators. So for example, if uh, my lines of codes, uh, code is increasing, am I going to expect a lot more defects? Uh, it's a simple uh, uh, you know, uh, correlation analysis that, that can be done. Or for example, does uh, more number of people uh, result in more number of issues in a particular team uh, for the same kind of a project? So it's a very visual image of how potential factors are, are related to key outcomes uh, and it's an indication of any relationships in, uh, that are followed by more, uh, by more statistical methods. So uh, scatter plots is one of the tools that you could use in the analyze phase. Now there are a lot of other tools uh, in the analyze phase like there are a lot of lean tools, uh, 5S, Pokayoke, Hajanka, Kaikaku. Um, yeah, the list goes on. Uh, you have the seven QC tools, correlation analysis, regression analysis, FMEA, hypothesis testing, ANOVA, design of experiments, etc. So that's the analyze phase uh, where, uh, again, summarizing analyze phase uh, is all about identifying what are the root causes that are stopping my business process from achieving its target potential or foot potential and obviously you understand the sources of variation and also identify what are the potential solutions that you can implement in the improve phase so that was the part six of the total of part eight um, this is uh, kindas we will get back to you with the next upload of the video on the improve phase Thank you and have a good day. This is Papanihan.